Thinking, vision, global integration. The question is, in this session, in this particular session, and also, very interestingly, this morning I heard an ex-president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, Mr. Mujahid Ishahi, Ishahi sir, he might be here. Ishahi sir said that we are all sick and tired, in a very provocative and uh, angry fashion, he said, we are all sick and tired of rhetoric, we want solutions. Now let this particular session, a brief session of about 50, 60 minutes, be a session where we can test, because, you know, the, 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 the topic of the whole thing is testing times, the reflections on present and future. Now let this session be a testing time that to what extent all of you have absorbed the ideas that were debated, discussed from the panel uh, since yesterday, and to what extent this worthy, distinguished panel can answer your concerns. We will have a QA. and a because briefly speaking, I mean the introduction, a detailed introduction has already been given by Badia, but briefly speaking, I will say uh, that in this panel we have at least three uh, distinguished persons who have, broadly speaking, a background into finance, economic policy management, or taxation. We have with us uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Atif Bajwa Sahab, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Bank Alphala. We have Abdullah Yusuf Sahab, ex-chairman of the Federal Board of Revenue. We have over here uh, Mr. Shabbar Hussain Zaidi Sahab, ex-president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, finance and background, taxation background people. But then we also have, uh, in Mr. Uh, Mr. Senator Harun Akhtar, we have a lawmaker, a legislator, and a leading businessman in the sugar area and industry area. And then in Amir Bilal Sufi, we have a noted distinguished lawyer who brings an international perspective, an international connect to this panel. So the deal over here is that I would give, starting from Mr. Atif Padwa, three minutes to every panelist, that whatever issue they think is their principal issue in their mind, uh, or, or their area of strength, they should come up with a solution, just three minutes. And within 15 minutes we wrap up the first uh, round from the panelist, and then we open it up from the question. We'll take one question from the left, uh, from, the, from the right, and one question from the left. Uh, you must introduce yourself uh, and say briefly and try to uh, raise your question within, say, one and a half minute to two minutes. So, Mr. Atik Patwa, I will request you to come up with your solution for testing times, reflections on present and future. Yes, I think the, the tone has been set uh, by Dr. Muin. It requires. Uh, yeah, Maybe you can actually. Um, actually, Mike Mahal is good enough. Should be. I think uh, the tone has been set by Dr. Moed in, in terms of uh, what has to be said in the next three minutes. Uh, I will summarize the thoughts that I had come here with uh, and really try to touch upon some of the specific things that perhaps can be um, uh, expanded upon later in the question and answer session. Um, talking about the banking industry, which is what I represent here, uh, clearly the banking industry in any economy is a reflection of what happens in, in the economy. So we have uh, a reflection of the economy through the, through the portfolio that the banking sector is carrying today. Um, and rather than talk about all the details, just uh, some high-level numbers. We have an NPL problem, a non-performing loan problem in the financial services sector. Uh, so we are at about 16.2 percent of our total loans are now non-performing in the banking sector. And that is just not a, a, an issue of banks, it is a reflection of what is happening in the economy. So that's just to set the stage. Any economy with that kind of an NPL ratio cannot be expected to perform well. Why is the banking industry still uh, profitable? It's because the spreads are very high. And we are becoming complacent. As I said, it's really coming from the economy, what's happening in the economy, what our customers, what they go through, through lack of infrastructural support, power, energy, um, you know, the whole host of other issues which I won't get into. That gets reflected in our portfolio and the performance of our people. 
But also what is happening is the banks are not being able to grow their portfolios because the economy isn't growing. Our customers are, are finding it difficult to invest in new projects, and therefore the banks are also finding it difficult to invest in good private sector projects. So where is the money going? It's going to, to finance the government sector deficits. Uh, that, again, is not a good thing. At the same time, we can't blame everything on the economy. Uh, there is a risk management uh, problem at, uh, that we have to own up to and, and recognize. I think the banks have been uh, making decisions in the past which are now coming back to hurt them. And that is an overall risk management infrastructure that needs to be looked at. Um, part of it is decision making at the bank level, but also an ecosystem that helps banks make the right decisions has gradually been eroding. What do I mean by that? When bankers make a decision to lend, they look at the customer and the cash flows and the, and the industry and the growth trends, but they also look at what is the infrastructure to recover in case things go bad. That means security, perfection of security, going to the judicial system and being able to get decisions and recovering in, in case that is required. That ecosystem over the decades has deteriorated to the extent that banks are not able to make the right kind of decisions, not knowing what will happen to their uh, assets in the future. Now, having said that, the last point I, uh, that I want to uh, uh, mention before uh, we, we move on is that I think the banks overall because of this complacency, have not done justice to the financial services sector development. They have not invested in capital markets development. They have focused on getting deposits and then putting that into, in the end, just government treasuries and, and, and loans. And that's not banking. Banking is much more, should be much more. It should actually look at going out and understanding customer needs and developing the various uh, product and services uh, that will cater to their needs. And a lot of them don't have to do with lending. Payment products, for instance, uh, 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 from a, uh, an overall economy point of view, close to one-third of the total money supply is actually in cash. Uh, that, that is a huge drain on the economy. And why is that in cash? Because our, our, our uh, you know, behavior or customer behavior is that way, but also banks have not encouraged and not come up with the right products and services which allow that cash to move through electronic channels. Even if you were to move 5% of the total money supply in 